Hi, Jay. How are you? Hey, Arturo. How's it going? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm super excited uh, uh, about having you here. I'm super excited about what we're going to talk about today. Um, but yeah, I I, I I would like to thank you first for being here um, and taking the time because you're in the future. It's already nighttime for you, right? <laughs> no, thank you. It's it's great. It's 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 a good chance to talk about games, which uh, usually when I talk with people about these games, they just walk away. So uh, it's nice that you're not going to walk away. I'm, I'm, I'm excited <laughs> about it. Nice. So I want to welcome also everyone watching this video or uh, listening to the to the audio. Uh, this this project or these this podcast or video cast I don't know it's called Top Five uh, and basically every session uh, I'm gonna talk with one of my friends uh, about their top five video games of all time and we're going to go through all of or, or some details not necessarily on the technical side or on the game design side uh, basically on whatever side uh, that we want and again today i would like to introduce one of my best friends in the world uh <laughs> jay santos uh he already said hello but I, I i guess we should start talking about how we met and the the history that we have together jay uh, I, here's one question. Do you remember when we met for the first time? Uh, I remember the second time. I okay. barely <laughs> remember the first one. I, I remember startup video games. Yeah, so uh, so that was the second one. The first one okay. was at this event in Mexico City called Devour. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember that one. Ah, uh, yes, Devour. I, I remember Devour, but I got to be honest, I don't remember you with Devour. <laughs> Sorry about that. You, you were a rock star. <laughs> you were there with Carl. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, and I told you, oh, can you sign my, my Unity book? And you were like, no, 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 kid. Get lost. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but Security. I, <laughs> but I met you there, and then it was these other, uh, uh, the, the Startup Week in Video Games, also in Mexico City. Yep. And then the third one, which was, do you remember the third one that we met? Did we met after? We met after Startup Weekend and before, uh, and before you joined Unity. Well, when you interviewed me for the Unity position. I oh, know, I know. Yeah, so interview was the third time. Yeah, that was the third time. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. So that's our story, and then. Um, yeah, I joined Unity, you were my, my boss, and then you left Unity, you abandoned me, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're now just good friends. Uh, but but tell us a bit about, about yourself, Jay. Sure. So, yeah, so my name is Jay. I, um, I've been playing video games for geez, um, 37 years, I think. Uh, I started with, the, with an Atari 2600. And then I switched to a PC and I kind of skipped the 8-bit and 16-bit video game generation. I had a, I had a, a Genesis, uh, but at the end of the 16-bit era, and after that, I play video games and PC uh, for, for the rest of my life. Uh, I always wanted to work with video games, and I was lucky enough to get a job leaving college, developing games and mobile applications, but that was before smartphones. Uh, Were you using I like was, Java and uh, those kind of C++, things? C++. C++. It was, a, uh, it was a Qualcomm framework called Brew, which oh. was based on C++. Okay. I did a lot of cool stuff. Then I switched to network security for about five, six years, which uh, gave me the skills to be able to finally join Unity, where I spent six more years. And today I work with developer relations at uh, Improbable, which, uh, which developer, it develops uh, uh, multiplayer uh, tools for multiplayer games, essentially. 
That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and actually, well, I don't think anyone will go and uh, try to find you, but where, where are you currently <laughs> living? Uh, I live in London now. I live in London for about uh, a year? No, more. No, no, no. Yeah, a year and a half. Yeah, more than a year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a year, year and a half. Before that, I lived for almost two years in Singapore, and before that, Brazil. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, you're, you're Brazilian, right? I am, I am. I'm, I'm originally from Brazil, yes. That's yes, awesome, that's awesome. And actually, even if I, I, I wouldn't tell that, one of your games would, uh, will have <laughs> turned you turn. <laughs> Turned you out. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's Jay's story. I, I also have to say that um, it's it's always been great working with you or just hanging yeah, out with you. you. Uh, wh when was that? In February, I had to go to London uh, yep. for something work related. Uh, it was it was crazy how we could see each other again, and we had dinner at the. Gordon Gordon Ramsay Gordon restaurant. Ramsay's restaurant. Yes. Yeah, it was cool. It was pretty good. It was, it was pretty good. good. Yeah, yeah, but in, uh, yeah. I was I was super happy to see you too. It was it was great. It was always a joy spending time with you, man. <laughs> nice. And you know and you, you know that's true. You know that's true. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I'm I'm cool. Uh, so no news. There. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 modest. And modest as as well. Yeah. Um. So 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 yeah, I I, I you you mentioned you played uh, Atari twenty six hundred, right? Yeah, that's yep. that was your first console. Uh, yeah, then you stopped playing on the sixteen bit era you mentioned. No, it's, it's just that um, my dad got me a PC. Oh okay, and, so you skipped uh, the consoles. That those yeah, consoles. And, ah. yeah. I think I think he wanted to steer me into computers so he gave me the pc but he never gave me a, a video game console so I, 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 I would play on the pc yeah okay okay i That's... i my my contact with the 8-bit generation was much more with the master system than with the nintendo the nes yeah with uh -huh. nintendo because i had a friend that had a master system so i would go to his place and uh and play alex kid so Oh, okay. <laughs> did, did you also play like uh, arcades? We call in uh, in Mexico maquinitas, or is yeah, that a thing in I, Brazil? It was. I. How I do you call like them? The, in Brazil, called fliperama. Okay. Uh, I played very little of it because, on you know, on that age that you go to these places. In Brazil, Street Fighter was was a big thing, right? And I always sucked at Street Fighter, so <laughs> I, yeah, I would just I would just get my ass kicked. I, I had no fun playing it, so uh, what's the point? I was just gonna get back home and play on my PC. It's, it's free. I don't have yeah. to pay for it. You know, it's, it's much better. So yeah. yeah, I was never I was never big on arcades, you know, um, nice. but mostly because I sucked at Street Fighter. Yeah. Okay. What can you do? Yeah, yeah I, 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 I <laughs> here's a hint. Street Fighter is not on my list. Okay. I I, <laughs> I played a lot of Street Fighter 2 on on mm -hmm. uh, on the arcades, which usually mm -hmm. in Mexico used to be located at pharmacies. <laughs> uh, outside of really? a pharmacy. Yeah, yeah. So if yeah, that that was where you will go to play arcades. There were some places where you had like a lot of arcades, but Yeah, for the average person, uh, you will go to a, to a pharmacy. Uh, and I remember playing that and also, uh, what's the name of the Snow Bros? Did you ever play Snow Bros? Snow Bros? Yes. So it was an, an, a platformer uh, where you control one character that will shoot snowballs and you had to freeze your enemies into snowballs and then just keep... Uh, was anyway. It, was, that, was, that, was, that, was that an arcade? Or... Well, I, 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 that was also released on on, on NES, I believe. But uh, yeah, I, I remember playing that Jeez, on arcade. I, 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 man, that, that doesn't ring a bell. 
No but then worries. again, you, t- you told me about <laughs> Pepsi Man, and I thought you were lying. So. Oh man, Pepsi Man. <laughs> Let's see if if Pepsi Man is on your top five because maybe I, I... maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it is. Maybe it is. We never know. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's start because we've been talking for 10 minutes and we haven't started with the topic. <laughs> so you're going to tell us your top five games. Uh, right. I'm not sure if you want to go in order, whatever you prefer, but okay. um, then we're going to discuss that game. Uh, sounds good? Sure. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So let's start with your first game. Just just mention okay. your first the first game that you want to mention. Okay. So the f- <laughs> I'm going to give a couple of hints about okay. the first game and everybody in the o- in the audience is going to guess wrong. Okay. So my first game is from LucasArts. Okay. It's an adventure game. Okay. It was released in 1990. And it is not Monkey Island. My first game, my first favorite game of all time is Loon. Okay. Okay. Now, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's 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 possible that you never uh, heard about Loon, but funny thing is, I was you know I was doing some googling before we started recording, mm-hmm. and I found an article. From February 2020 on okay. Vice, on okay. Vice.com, <laughs> uh-huh. titled Why Loom Remains the Hidden Gem of Lucasfilm Adventures. Uh, so, yeah, so Loom is, it impacted me so much as a kid that I still have very, very, very fond memories of it. And the first time I heard about Loom was actually playing Monkey Island. Did you play Monkey Island? Yeah, I did play Monkey Island, which is by the same developers, right? Uh, yeah, Lucas. it's with, by LucasArts. Well. LucasArts, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, right at the beginning of Monkey Island, like, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes into the game, you walk into a tavern. And in the tavern, there's a guy sitting down, and when you talk with him, uh, the game would zoom into the character, right? For the dialogue uh, screen. And this guy had a pin on his chest that said something like, ask me about Loon. Okay. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, so, you know. But, uh, but wait, I have a question. How old were you at that time? Because it's like you were a genius kid or something like that? No, to, I was to catch 12. those details? Well, you, you were pretty young to, to catch those details, to be honest. No, I mean, but it's not a detail because then one of the dialogue options was asking the guy about Lou, you know? Okay. And, and then he starts telling this, oh, you mean Lou, the amazing adventure by LucasArts with incredible 16-bit graphics and sound, blah, 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 coming soon. And I look at that and say, okay, cool. So, you know, LucasArts worked on this game called Lou. And, okay, I'll keep my ears on ground so I can play Loom, right? And, and you know, time went by and I never heard about Loom again. And it was hard to get your hands into games in Brazil, right? Right. I mean, when I, and when I say hard, it I mean impossible. It, there was no way you could buy uh, non-pirated versions <laughs> of games in Brazil at that time. So you had, so in my case, what I used to do, what my dad used to do with me was uh, every other Saturday, we would go to this very shady, very, very rundown office building Mm -hmm. and we'd go to this, to this crappy, dirty room where a guy had a list printed on a dot matrix printer with the names of games, and you, you would pick a game, and he would make you a copy. It was like, I don't know, a dollar per floppy. So w- know, w- Was that like... guy wearing flip-flops? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's it, it, was, it was pretty shady overall, right? And it was like, a, uh, I don't know, a dollar a floppy. So if you, uh, a two-floppy game would cost you like $2. Mm-hmm. Was relatively cheap. 
And one day I finally went there and I was reading the list and I see Loom on the list. I say, oh my God, it's Loom. That's the, you know, the Lucas Arts game I always heard about, never played, right? So I bought a copy of Loom and and I played it and it it, it, it changed my life, right? Uh, I was very into, you know, I started playing on the Atari, as I said, and the Atari was very... <laughs> was very poor on story, right? Atari games had no story at all. Yeah. Uh, We're simpler games. Uh... Yeah, yeah, exactly. And when I migrated to PC and, you know, it was the golden age of adventure games and I got hooked, right? In the stories and, you know, in the characters and the narratives. And, and I still think that the story of Loon is such a beautiful story and such well done in the game uh there's like this whole cast of completely different characters and the characters have depth and the story is beautiful and emotional the soundtrack is amazing it is the most beautiful i'd still say there's the most beautiful soundtrack for a video game i have ever heard it's it's all i i believe it's all parts of swan lake uh yep, which yep, makes yeah sense yeah yeah which makes sense when you play the game, you know? Yes. And, and on top of that, it had a very different interface from the, uh, from the LucasArts adventure games, right? So LucasArts adventure games had the bar at the bottom uh, with all the actions and you clicked on the action, click on the object and you would do something, right? Click on open, click on door, you would open the door, right? Uh, Loom, uh, on Loom, you your character have a staff, and the staff have like seven or eight uh, notes, musical notes. And as you progress in the game, you learn spells for the staff. Mm -hmm. So you figure out that I don't know the spell that turns hay into gold is red, yellow, green. So you click on on a pile of hay, click red, yellow, green, the pile of hay turns into gold. But not only that, then you figure out that if you do the opposite, if you do green, yellow, red, you turn gold into hay. It's the opposite. And it's the same for every single spell in the game. Okay. And okay. that's all, I mean, you can talk with other with other characters, but that's all the, the, the whole interaction of game is in this the staff, right? And that, I, I, that, you know, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I, I was going to say that I haven't played the game. I was watching some uh, gameplay of it. And at least at first sight, it doesn't seem that it's too complex. You know, like the puzzles are not extremely complex, but usually these type of games are difficult, right? Like you have to pay close attention. Uh, you have to commit to the game. Is this, is this game like that? The puzzles are very well made. That's the, that's the thing, especially when you compare, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Monkey Island. I think Monk, Monkey Island games are great. Uh, well, at least one and two, then after a third one, we can start to debate, but one and two are brilliant. They're really good. The other LucasArts games, the Indiana Jones games are great. Uh, Day of the Tank Taco is amazing, but I seem to recall, and I may be wrong, but on all these games, at least one puzzle I have solved using brute force. And by brute force, I mean, <laughs> okay, I'm stuck. I have these items and I have these things on the scene. I'm just going to test every single item and every single scene and see what happens, right? Um, there were no remember. YouTube channels that you could go to uh, to find them. No, no, no. Or YouTube internet, channels. like game facts or things like that. Yeah, no, because I mean, LucasArts and Sierra, they used to sell the hint books for the game. Right? Mm -hmm. And I was once reading an interview uh, with Al Lowe, which was one of the guys that worked at Sierra. He created the, the Leisure Suit Larry series. Uh, maybe Space Quest, I don't know. But he mm -hmm. said that uh, Sierra made way more money selling the hint books than selling the games themselves. So that's how they had... 
That's in the how States. they had an idea uh, worldwide. That's how they had an idea how much the games were pirated. Because, I don't know, they would sell X amount of games and 5X amount of inputs. Right. Uh, but yeah, but you know, if you if you wanted to figure out game, you would have to use a hint book or find uh, or find a walkthrough on on a, on volatile board systems. But other I, than that, uh, brute force. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. No, no. I I haven't played that many like uh, um, what's the, what's the name of the genre? Uh, graphic adventures. Point, but, yeah, point and click adventures. Point and click adventures. Yeah, adventures yeah. The last one that I played, and I think you played this as well, is the one from uh, Double Fine, uh, Broken Age. Did you play that one? Broken Age, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I played a little bit. I didn't really get hooked. Okay. I, I did, wanted... but I had to, to be honest, I had to go online every couple of hours or every X amount of minutes to get unstuck because yeah I, I guess i don't have the patience to to solve this and i don't see myself trying to find like uh loom uh just to play it because might be i might not be as patient you should watch watch a playthrough watch a playthrough it's such a beautiful game it's it's i i but i gotta be honest it's been a while since i last played i bought loom on steam okay just just because you know, even even these many years later, I still felt that I had to give some money for this game, <laughs> not, and, and not to a shady guy on a crummy building. Um, yeah, and that's great that you can still never... get those games today, because some of these yes, games cannot be run because of the they used to run on a specific hardware. Yeah. But it's yeah, yeah. it's great that you can. Yeah, but uh, there are two things. There are two reasons why I, I never played it again. Uh, the first one is that I'm just I'm simply afraid that the mechanics didn't didn't held up, yeah. and I play now say, wow, this game sucks. You know? <laughs> and right. That's gonna break my illusion and break how I feel about Loom because I I would say I would say that maybe Loom is my top one. It's top okay. three for sure, maybe top one, and and also because the the version that's available on Steam mm -hmm. is the 256 bits version with uh, fancier sound. But honestly, I, I heard the soundtrack of both, and I feel like the 16 bit one uh, sounds better. Uh, you can find both on, on, on YouTube if you want to hear it. it I, I heard both when, uh, when I was preparing for this. Mm -hmm. It still both gave me this very warm, fuzzy feeling in my heart, you know, like that's it's, awesome. I, I just yeah, I mean it's I can't help but have a smile on my face when I think about Loom because it's such a such a beautiful game, such an amazing game, yeah. Yeah, in, and, in and all I, aspects. And, and and I was watching uh, I was looking at the graphics and it looks beautiful. And I, I just can't imagine of course by today's standards uh, it, it looks different, but I can mm -hmm. imagine you jumping as a kid and watching these like pixels and everything look like, oh my God, this looks like a cartoon. I cannot believe it. And then you revisit this <laughs> 30 years later and it's like, oh, wow, this, this looks old, I, I guess is the, is, is the, is the word. Uh, one thing that I noticed is that they had uh, inside, well, two things. One is that I didn't know that Lucas Arts was previously named, uh, or the name of the company was Lucas Films Games, uh, which was one thing that I found interesting. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe if you maybe Loom is still Lucas Film Games. I I can't really recall. I I just use Lucas Film and Lucas Arts interchangeably. Yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. And the other thing is that they use this engine called Scum. S C U M M, which stands for mm -hmm. Scripts Creation, Script Creation Utility for Maniac Mansion, which is another <laughs> game that by by yep. Lucas Arts as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, that I haven't played either, but of course this uh, this is the type of game that you know about because it's like a cool thing. Everybody loves Maniac Mansion, and Maniac Mansion is probably my least favorite adventure game. And okay. that's because it have what I personally think is a serious design flaw. Mm -hmm. 
which is the game allows you to get into no-win situations. Meaning that at some point in the game, you can do something that if you do it, you are no longer able to finish the game. Well, to win the game. Oh, I see. I and see. some of the stuff and some of the stuff can happen very early in the game. So like you do it in the first, I don't know, first 20, 30 minutes of the game. And hours and hours later you figure out that all my effort was for nothing. You know? <laughs> yeah. And I, I think, and I think that sucks, right? <laughs> it's it's it it uh, does, yeah. Although uh, it depends because uh, and and talking about these type of games and, and 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 some other ones, sometimes people want to play because they want to suffer, right? In my case, <laughs> I I play because I don't want to suffer. I play because I just want to have a fun time. And usually, okay. when I play, I'm playing something and it gets too difficult that I'm not enjoying it. I simply say like. Uh, no, I, I and I go to YouTube to like Metal Gear Solid Five. Mm -hmm. I I was having a good time for the first thirty hours, I guess, uh, and then I was I stopped enjoying it. So I I bought the game and then I went to YouTube to watch just the story because I was not enjoying it and and I play to enjoy. So that's my type of player. I think you play to to suffer. I I don't. <laughs> But this, but these are these are two different things, right? Because I felt what you felt with Metal Gear Solid Five. It was like I got into the first big boss fight, which was like 20, 30 hours in the game, and I thought that was the end of the game. And when I realized it was not, I said, <laughs> uh, yes, "I'm good. Okay, yeah, I, 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 I'm good. Enough, enough." Yeah, yeah. But, well. <laughs> but when, when I, but when I play Cuphead. I suffer, you know, yes. it's stressful, but I enjoy it because it, I'm suffering because that is a challenge, right? And True. it is pleasurable when you overcome the challenge. True. It's, it's diff I, wouldn't, I wouldn't use suffer. I don't know which, which word I would use, but it's different than what happened with me and with you on Metal Gear Solid 5. Makes sense. Makes sense. But that, so that's Gloom. That's uh, it's great that people can still like if if you sold someone into buying Loom, then they can go to Steam and, and play it. Uh, let me yeah, let me know. I I great. would love I would love to I would love to know if somebody played Loom because of me. Actually, yeah. one more detail. Uh -huh. I uh, a few months ago, that's that's the last I'm going to talk about Loom. I promise. But a few months ago, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, I was reading Edward Snowden biography, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Herman's record, and and early in the in, early in the book, he's telling you know when he was a kid and his dad bought a computer, blah blah blah, and he mentions Loom by name. He says, "Yeah, and I used to play Loom, and it was great, you know." And I read that, so holy shit, Edward Snowden play Loom. This is amazing. And he's <laughs> mentioning Loom. I, I was so happy. I was so happy about it. It was it was pretty cool, yeah. That's an, a a great uh, bit of knowledge, uh, and I, I I I have to say probably you're one of these few people that I know whose brain is full of these small I things <laughs> that are useful <laughs> in for conversations. I guess completely useless stuff. Yeah, I can't remember my dad or my mom's birthday, but. I remember that ever so we play Loom. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. So that's Loom. <laughs> Let's go to the to the next one because two. Uh, yeah, next this one. is called top five, not top one. So <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I'm just right. kidding. Uh, so which one is the next one? So the next one, uh, it's newer. It's okay. more popular. So uh, people can breathe easy. Okay. But I'm kind of cheating. Uh, so the second one on the list is Portal 1 and 2. It's two games in one. Yes. <laughs> so but it only yeah. counts as one. Why do you think it the, counts as one? <laughs> because it is, you know, it's, it's the narrative just continues so nicely from the first to the second, you know? There's almost no interruption in the narrative that I feel like it's just one 
nice story. Right. That's it. Let's consider it the story. No. <laughs> Not the, the, the different games. Which I, yeah. I was thinking, okay, so Portal was developed and published by Valve, which is, yeah. this takes place in the same world as uh, Half-Life. Half-Life, Half-Life. Yeah. So it's, it's the same universe as Half-Life. Yeah. And it was released, the first one, on 2017. Oh, no. 2017. 2011, no. sorry. I have 2011. my yeah, yeah, yeah. And the That's second right. one on 2017. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, right. yeah. Yeah, which, uh, it's a first-person shooter. They, they, uh, uh, yeah, because, well, it's a first-person uh, Yeah, okay, it's a first-person game, yes. Yeah, it's yeah. a first-person game, but it's more like a puzzle game. Yeah. Right? Uh, it, is, it is more like a puzzle game, yeah. And you control on the first one. You control this lady. I think it's called Chow. Ch Chow. 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 Yeah. And on the second one, you control a robot. Correct. No, on the second one you control on the. Uh, if I recall correctly, on the single player mode you control Chow as well. No, there is a really two. Know. There is a two player mode where each player is a robot. Yeah, maybe I, I'm, I'm getting those confused. And I, actually, I agree with you on Portal. I wouldn't say it's on my top five, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's an amazing game. I, I, I love, uh, I love the, the game. And actually, I believe I have the dates wrong. The first one should be 20, uh, 2007, not 2017. Yeah, and you're... the second one, two, 2011. No, so. yeah, I, I I have it open here. So two Portal Two is two thousand eleven, right? Yeah, and Portal One is two thousand seven. Yeah, I I had an a one an extra one in my notes there. So uh, there th did you play the Portal as part of the Orange Box? No, I I don't I I know for sure that Portal Two I played on the PlayStation Three. Okay. Because I remember playing it in my nephew. Uh, Portal 1, I can't recall how I first got in touch with Portal. But, but, <laughs> but I, 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 almost all the things that I said to, uh, said about Loom applies to Portal as well, you know. Uh, the characters, even though you have very little amount of characters in the game, uh, the the mechanics, the backstory, and how the backstory is introduced, right? There's mm -hmm. no cutscenes in Portal. It's you have to the, the whole storytelling is so integrated in the game, right? And when I when I played I, I recently recently finished the Death Stranding. And I really like Death Stranding, but I hated the ending. Without giving too much away, yeah, the ending is pretty much two hours of exposition. It's two hours of you not doing anything about yeah, 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 exposition. People telling you the backstory, basically, you know, and and that that felt so out of balance to me, right? I played this whole game with very little story and i was super happy with the amount of story the game was giving me right but then all of a sudden the game is over and i just listening people talk and talk and talk and talk and talk right it, yeah it felt embarrassing but on a portal i mean it's just there within the game well integrated it is super nice how the storytelling blends with the game and and the mechanics itself right and and i think that's something about Valve in general, because uh, uh, Half Life, it's the same. Like there are never like cutscenes. There are never like I'm not. Rem I, I don't remember if Shell speaks or talks. But you know, you I, you I, I don't think so. Yeah. You become that character, and I I like that experience in particular in a in a first person uh, yeah. game. Uh, and 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 there's there's this interesting thing about. Uh, Portal, uh, you know, because it's it's heavy. The, the the puzzles are heavy on physics. Basically, if you want to succeed, mm -hmm. you want to learn how the physics of the game works. Uh, and on the first one, it's just that you use the gravity gun, right? 
mostly you just have the gravity, which is similar to the one that you use on, on Half-Life uh, 2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the second portal, you use a similar uh, gun, but now you have some sort of gels. So one gel allows you to yeah, go you have... like faster. Uh, the other one allows you to go uh, like jump higher and things like that. Jump higher, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you can create portals, which is where the name come from, comes from. Mm -hmm. So you put a portal in, in one place and another one in the second place, and you go from one to the to the next one, which I think the mechanic, it's, it's one of those things that I guess it's very simple. And you will say like, well, how can you think of eight hours of gameplay with that <laughs> single mechanic? But, but yeah, I, I, I also like uh, Portal. Uh, a lot, uh, a lot. There's there's this thing, right? So if you if you think about puzzle games before Portal, they were just like a list of puzzles, right? Uh, mm -hmm. One game that pops into mind is The Incredible Machine. You remember The Incredible Machine? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. This uh, this game I, I played that on PC, and I remember yeah. probably it was like a flash game or something on a website. I mm -hmm. I have like those memories where you will just create like contraptions to yep. solve puzzles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, trivia time. These are called Rube Goldberg machines. Okay. Because <laughs> there was this cartoonist called Rube Goldberg. He would draw them. And so they're called Rube Goldberg machines. But anyway, so the Incredible Machine is a pretty cool game. It's a fun game, but it's just a list of puzzles, right? Yeah. You play the first one. And then the second, and the third, and the fourth, fifth. And when you're done, you're done, right? Porto is exactly the same, but they managed to integrate this story and this universe with, once again, these compelling characters within this list of puzzles, right? And that's, and, and, and I think that's, that's what got me hooked. You know, because once again, as I said, I, I on my on my game playing formative years, I was playing adventure games. So I like stories. I like narratives. I I hardly play multiplayer games today because I don't see a point. I I just you know I play a session of say Fortnite, and and then I play the other and the other and the other and the other and just leveling up and what's the point right i don't see a point in doing that uh i like games with a with a beginning and an ending so i know i finished the game and i can move on in my life move on right the next one. right I, I mean like that and i i also think that you don't like multiplayer games because for instance mario kart the last time <laughs> that we played i i don't i don't want to say bad words but i won big time you first of all you have not Second of all, that's different because that's local multiplayer. Local multiplayer is with your friends, you're interacting, you're having a good time, right? I'm, I'm talking more of, of online multiplayer games where you're playing with strangers that did horrible things with your mom. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and I, I, I'm a big fan of Half-Life. I, I think Half-Life 2 has been the game that I've played the most hours in my life. I played really? it at least... 20 times from start to finish uh and, really? and yeah yeah and uh yeah they uh, portal uses the same engine as half-life which is the source engine um mm -hmm. so yeah just wanted to to mention that and i i agree with you on portal i think uh, also that was kind of around the time where mobile started exploding and a lot yeah. of mobile games were based on physics like the angry birds mm -hmm. and many of those so yeah, I agree with you on, on on Portal. It's pretty also the song, the the ending song, which is on oh, the yeah. first Portal, right? Became on both, like on both, of on both of them, right, right, right. The, but the first one is um, anyway. I don't remember. I, I haven't played this in in a while, but that became it's like a, it's still alive. It's uh, still alive. Became it's like a, an anthem for the gamers. I, I, yeah. I, I went to a concert, a video games live concert 
<laughs> in Mexico City, and they sang this this song, and it was, um, yeah, you could get feel like the goosebumps uh, because it was. No, oh, there you go. Thanks, Mexico. thanks to, thanks to Portal. Thanks uh, because of the ending song. I so the ending song is was written by by a songer named by a singer named uh, Jonathan Colton. Yeah, Jonathan yes. Colton. Colton. I I had never heard about him, and I became a fan. He's great. You hear his other songs; they're amazing. They're pretty good. So, you know, yeah. thank you, Portal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so that's Portal. Let's go to Portal. your next one, your third okay. phase. So the third one, I think it is the the most recent one. Uh -huh. If you consider the series and not the latest game, yeah, for sure, and by a, by a wide margin. And the third one is Bioshock Infinite. Bioshock Infinite, not one, not not two, but Bioshock Infinite. Okay, the one that takes place in the skies. The one that takes place in the skies in Colombia, and it's colorful and it's beautiful and. It may have its game mechanics flaws, mm -hmm. but you know what? When I played, I didn't care because the game was amazing. And I I, I compare it, and, and it's amazing how... So Bioshock 1, is it's a good game. It's a pretty good game. Mm -hmm. It's far from being on the list. Bioshock 2 is forgettable. It, I don't know. Not a lot of people give a crap about Bioshock 2. <laughs> but I feel like that the Bioshock Infinite it's so good that it actually elevates Bioshock 1. It actually makes Bioshock 1 better. Okay. And if you I mean if you have you played Bioshock 1? Yeah, I played uh I actually played Bioshock 1 and Bioshock oh, no, Infinite. Infinite, yeah, yeah. yeah, I played Bioshock Infinite, yeah. So, you know, and, and it's not only because of the reason you're thinking that Infinite makes one better, you know? And and I think that Bioshock Infinite came on that time that every, every not every game, but most of the games look dark and gloomy, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of browns and grays and blacks, and Bioshock Infinite is so colorful. It's yeah. so graphically beautiful. You know? Yes. Yeah. It it doesn't it doesn't strive to be realistic and I don't care about it. But it its style is so I wish I was an artist to explain why the style of Bioshock <laughs> is so pleasant. Yeah, when, when, you know? yeah, those those kind of things the, the, the explanation that I give usually is like is a it's it has it has its own style, and I agree with yeah. you on, on on Bioshock because it the graphics are are amazing, and it's a game that was released in twenty thirteen, so mm -hmm. uh, I think it still holds up on on the graphics. Oh yeah, but uh, but yeah, the style like I would say is kind of like cartoony at some in some moments. Yeah, uh, <laughs> there's probably a name for that style, but I don't know what's the name, and it's but it's it's it's. Uh, it's got a very strong style and and at least to me it's very pleasant you know yeah so a couple of things about bioshock infinite it's uh it's it was developed by irrational games and published by 2k uh, it's a first person shooter this one is it's a first person shooter and it's uh it it's like it's made on 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 unreal and on the unreal unreal engine um mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I played Bioshock Infinite. I have to say I liked it. I I had fun, but I have one, I'm going to say a problem, but to me, when you use the Big Daddy in Bioshock, mm. Mm. it feels too lightweight compared to how I believe it should feel. You know, like if you're these like, What's the word like? Uh, uh, the word for a person who the big daddies. What what are those monsters? But so you want, uh, you want 
the clothes that they use, like the the, the diver, the diver, the diver. If they are divers with a huge yeah. like a uh, like a thing made out of metal, they shouldn't move mm -hmm. too fast. But that's just me. That that's the thing that breaks the experience of Bioshock in 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 particular. But back to uh, to to Infinite, I I love the mechanic of of you know using the the thingy that you use to to move around the the flying city. Uh, mm -hmm. and the uh, enemies that you find there, like the design of them, they mm -hmm. are crazy. I, I, I love yeah. those. I didn't buy any special edition of Bioshock Infinite. I believe I bought uh, Bioshock as a digital only thing, but there was this statue of the like eagle that you will get. Yeah. Yeah. The eagle of liberty, the songbird that I, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. That thing. Um, yeah. Uh, that 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 piece that that sculpture it's amazing. The the, the design of that character is it's great. And also the, here's one thing, and I, I think it's a, a, a something that I want to discuss with you, given that mm -hmm. we are not Americans and the <laughs> game takes place in, in like an alternate uh, America or United States city, right? So this is not mm -hmm. something that mm -hmm. necessarily we know because we don't. Yeah, that's not part of our, our culture, I will say. But we get uh, those sure. those those things from uh, like movies and other TV shows. But uh, keep saying that I I believe that they the the atmosphere it's amazing. Like the robot yeah. is that a Washington robot? Uh, th yeah, there is. There is one level in the game where you go like the like on the Hall of Presidents. Uh huh. <laughs> and you, you you fight against one of I can't recall which one, but you fight against one of the presidents. I I, yeah. I think it's it's maybe George Washington, but those kind of <laughs> my my point here was like I wish there were games like these big type of games like AAA games taking place in Mexico, for instance. And there are yeah. there are some like Ghost Recon uh, games that take place in Mexico, but it's more about like uh, narcos and those kind of things. But it would be great to to relive these alternate universes in a game. But and, and I, yeah, I, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, yeah, so Mexico have Ghost Recon, uh, Brazil have Max Payne three, right? <laughs> which right. takes place in Sao Paulo. <laughs> There's also, I believe, yeah, that's the one that takes place in Sao Paulo. I'm not sure if one of the the splinter cells also takes place in Sao really? Paulo. There is a, there is a, on one of the Assassin's Creeds, uh, you have a very short level in Rio. Uh, really? But it's very short. So Max Payne 3 is entirely Sao Paulo. But I totally agree. Like this out alternate stories uh, in Latin American countries, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff to do, right? It's, yeah. <laughs> it, it can be really interesting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And one, at one, least one, one, one. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say at least uh, you know in in Overwatch there are some characters from our yeah. countries. I would say, but well, at least it's it's, it's a step forward. <laughs> yeah. Well, who knows, right? Yeah, uh, it, will, it will be nice. <laughs> I, one thing I remember that I, I, I think what solidified Bioshock Infinite in the list mm -hmm. was um, so relatively at the beginning of the game, uh, you find a barbershop quartet. And they are singing God Only Knows from the Beach Boys, right? And the game takes place like in the early 20th century, I would say in the teens or the 20s. So there's no way that these guys should know the Beach Boys song, right? Uh -huh. But there they are. And, and when I first found it, it, it was not exactly in your path, right? It's just like on a back alley or something. And I found that I thought, huh. But, you know, this is an interesting uh, Easter egg, right? Yeah, for uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then you continue to play, and and then you find uh, a carnival, and and on the carnival, there's I think it is Cindy Lauper's song playing, 
like uh, girls just want to have fun girls just want to have fun in the carousel and i heard that i said okay cool interesting right and then when you unravel the plot of the game and you find out why those things are happening i said oh my god that is that is pretty cool right that is you know the game is making me call back on these things that happened before, right? It's it's that thing that I it, it, I thought it was pretty cool, you know, on, on, on a storytelling perspective, mm-hmm. you know, to say, remember those things that you saw that you thought was cute and quaint? Well, guess what? There is a reason because that is not a Easter egg. It's dumb, dumb. They, they're happening because <laughs> of this, right? Yeah. And, and, and I thought that was pretty clever. I said, okay. And then you start to unravel the plot and unravel the plot and unravel the plot. And it's, and, and it's a pretty beautiful story as well, right? When you come to think about it. I mean, um, it's a very nice story too. And it, the ending is not so nice, but it's a nice story. But you mean it's not nice because you didn't like the ending or because of how it was delivered? It is, it, it, it is a sad ending, isn't it? Like... Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. No. I was. I, I like yeah, the ending. It's always a lighthouse. I like the ending too. I'm not saying I didn't like this. Just it's not a happy ending, right? It's not. Right. No. No. Uh, yeah. So, but it's it's once again it's storytelling, right? It's uh, I I just love a game with a good story. That's it's that's what hooks me. And then you have these details about, hey, remember that thing that you saw and the art style. I even forgive the gameplay flaws, which I honestly don't even didn't even bother me at all when I first played. But after I played, I start reading people complaining about it. And I don't know, it, it was fine to me, you know. Yeah, no, I I think it plays great. I my only complaint with Bioshock in general is the the weight of the things. Like, like mm. in my, in my mind, that sh- they, the, those uh, characters shouldn't so like but anyway so they're, I, I <laughs> they're genetically modified so that's that's true that's true and and you know <laughs> I, I like both settings of bioshock like oh, the underwater setting and the flying uh, city yeah. setting i i i love those those, those yeah. both because i think they appeal to these two fears that many people have which is like being in a claustrophobic environment and also being in a in a place where you can easily fall and it's you're flying kilometers uh, from from earth the first one the first one bothered me a lot in the sense you know it bothered i mean it it, it is very stressful right because not only that not only you are underwater on this city that is falling apart but Everywhere you go, there's something leaking, right? There's something yeah, leaking water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yes, know, yeah. <laughs> did, did you <laughs> did you play the latest Star Wars game? Star Wars game. Um, uh, I forgot the name. Ah, Star the Uncharted. G- the Uncharted. Star Wars Uncharted. <laughs> yeah, that one. That was released yeah, last year. Twenty twenty. I loved it. Yeah, it's. Uh, God damn it, what's the name? I know which one it is. I played Star it and I loved Wars it. New Order? Fallen Order. Fallen Jedi Order. Fallen Order. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so there's this scene where you... Uh, I don't want to sp- give spoilers, but... Uh, <laughs> um, where, where you face a, a very let's, let's, famous... Okay, so let's, let's do this. Let's do this. You're going to edit this thing, right? So, no, this is going asses. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to avoid spoilers for Fallen Order, jump to the timestamp showing in the screen right here. There you go. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's a good one. So, right. yeah, you encounter uh, Darth Vader yep. and you are like in a tunnel underwater. Yep. And at some point, the tunnel breaks, which is made out of glass. And I got like a flashback <laughs> to Bioshock, and it was it was pretty pretty cool. It was pretty cool. You know, you know why I did it. I love the game, but having Darth Vader in that game really, really 
took me out of game, you know, because it was so fan servicey. It was so <laughs> fan servicey. That I, there was no, there's no reason why I haven't Darth Vader that freaking game. I was loving the game, but uh, I, I saw Darth Vader still. So, oh my god, no. <laughs> really? I mean, I I, I, I like him there. <laughs> I mean, he's he's a great character, but he's been so used, and and I'm 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 so fatigued of Star Wars, of the old Star Wars. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I love the Mandalorian. I was loving the Fallen Order up to the point that Darth Vader showed up. Don't give me that. Give me new stuff. You know, forget about these guys. You've you've already told the story. Tell me new stories. <laughs> you know, okay. it, it was. But it bothered me a lot, you know. I, I, I wasn't expecting that. I thought the game was going to be self-contained without too many references to the movies. And then Darth Vader showed up. And it made me sad. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I like that fan service. I, I, I stopped being like a Star Wars fan Star Wars fan a couple of years ago, but I had fun with the uh, Fallen Order and I liked seeing Darth Vader because the other characters I lo- I liked the some of the other characters, but in the game? yeah, in the game. I but... love the whole cast of the game. I <laughs> the entire cast of the game is amazing, but Darth Vader. <laughs> okay. Um. So yeah, that was Bioshock Infinite. I really, I, I really wanted to buy an action figure of the tiny robot. I don't remember his name. The tiny robot from Fallen Order. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I don't remember the, the yeah, name either. It's... A uh, sequence of letters and numbers, but the next R two D two. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there's yeah. nothing available. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So next game that was Bioshock Infinite. Your next Just favorite Bioshock. game. Number four. Okay, so number four is. <laughs> okay, I I have to say, we already mentioned that you are Brazilian, right? <laughs> and yes. um, so the next game. Has to do with yeah, it shouldn't be a surprise. It shouldn't be a surprise. It is going to be a surprise. Though. It's going to be a surprise because it's not the most common game that I will expect you to 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 choose. It's it's, it's not even the second most common game. <laughs> and probably if we put the Mario universe there, probably it's not even the third. Most common <laughs> <game>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. But okay, so, which one is your third game? <laughs> so number four is Football Manager. It's my okay. favorite football game of all times. Okay. As you mentioned, I'm Brazilian and uh-huh. I really like football. I love football. Of course. Um, of course. No surprise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me let me tell you a story. I, I got t- I love telling st- random stories that have nothing to do with anything. Before yeah. I joined YouTube, I, I went to Mexico to do a meeting and I I was having a meeting with this guy, and the meeting was done, and I met the rest of the people that work at the company, right? And they told me that the guy was Brazilian. I, I didn't notice that. He didn't have an accent. He spoke Spanish. And so the guy's from Mexico. Yeah, he's Brazilian. I said, really? So said, yeah. And he's been living in Mexico for how long? Uh, he's been living here for about five years. I said, okay, cool. And then he said something like, yeah, but he doesn't like football. <laughs> and then I said, oh, so that's why he moved to Mexico then. And I spoke very seriously, right? I said, yeah. Yeah, he moved to Mexico. And they said, what do you mean? I said, don't you know? By law, every Brazilian must <laughs> enjoy football. Otherwise, they lose their citizenship. <laughs> and then there was like three, four seconds of silence. And one of the guys from Mexico said, Really? <laughs> I said no, no, I'm joking. <laughs> well, I would have said like really because yeah, no, I don't see any flaws in that in that in that logic. And, and I also that reminds me, you only well, you went to Mexico two times. Well, more than two times, but in in my in my lifespan, in a company, yes, in in, in a company. Times, yes. So yes. one was when you went there to interview me. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the second one was like a, my onboarding type of thing. Yeah. And yeah. I remember we went to uh, the Pumas Stadium yeah. for uh, Pumas versus Toluca, which is my or was my team. I don't 
care about soccer anymore, I guess. But yeah, we ate some tacos outside the the, was lots of fun. <laughs> the, the stadium. Was we had fun. It was noon Mexico City time, so the sun was was it was strong. It was super warm. Yes. And I think it was like a zero zero, which is normal for soccer. Zero, zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but yeah, but it was fun. It was, so fun. Let's, let's, it was fun. Yeah, let's talk about football manager. Yeah, so uh, I have a couple of of things here. One is that the um, well, the developer here is Sports Interactive, right? Correct. Uh, I, I yes. believe they just may work on, on Football Manager and the series. They don't have other type of games. Not, not really. They have one. I think they have one other game. Uh, I can't recall the name, but it's 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 like, yeah, here it's, it's called East Side Hockey Manager, which is okay. Football Manager for Hockey. So that's that's the only I think that's the only two games that they have. So if we have people from Canada watching this, that's the oh yeah, the option for them. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> your your words not mine. <laughs> anyway, uh -huh, okay, they have these other <laughs> the other yeah, sports. Yeah, have, yeah, yeah. Which and... so 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 Football Manager is a soccer game, but it's not and a sport game, but it's not necessarily like a FIFA or revolution soccer is like a it management game correct it is almost the opposite of uh fifa and uh and pro evolution soccer uh so speaking about the game so football manager uh as the name says you are the manager of a football team or a football national team and it is up to you to and though all the day to day of the team, so uh, set up training regimens, uh, tactics, uh, buy, sell, and loan players, uh, promote players from your under eighteen team, scout for new scout for players throughout the world, and as I said, you set up, set up your team's tactics. And then you get to the match day, you start the match, and you don't play. You don't control your players. <laughs> okay, so when, when the phone is about to begin, you stop playing. <laughs> your, your words, not mine. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's when you see uh, the fruits of your labor, you know? Yeah. Uh, you have very little interaction during the game. You can... Uh, set up if you want the team to be more offensive, more defensive. You can, of course, change tactics, make substitutions. Uh, there's a pre-match talk. There's a halftime talk where you can try to encourage your players. Uh, there's a post-match talk. Um, you can give instructions to one individual player, but it's not one-to-one. -one. If you tell that player, you can tell the player, go and score a goal. And it's going to score a goal, you know. It's mm -hmm. and you can you can set instructions to the opposing team, so you know that the biggest threat of the opposing team is the right midfielder. So you can define that your left defender is going to tight mark your right midfielder, and and that consumes your life. Okay. Yeah. You think of anything? You cannot think of anything else the rest of your day, but the tactics that you're going to employ and who you're going to hire. Who you're gonna sell? It's, it's this is this is not a licensed game, right? Like the real teams are not there. Kind of. Uh, so, for instance, uh, talking about specifically about England, right? So the game uh, have the top. I'm gonna say the top six divisions of the what is called the English football pyramid. So if you want to play with a team of England's sixth division, you can. I think sixth, maybe fifth. I I can't exactly recall. But anyway, you can go deep into the uh, into the English football. Because and because I, I, I'm asking because I like FIFA. You know they have like mm -hmm. the full licensing for the teams yeah. and characters and and lookalikes, and yeah. that's one thing that made a lot of players to just choose FIFA because yeah. they could play with the, the, the players that they want to play as and the yeah. teams that they, they follow. And in the past, when uh, winning 11 uh, 
was not a licensed product or didn't have any license, you will feel like, okay, I'm playing uh, with a team that looks like uh, the, the team that I want to play as, but mm -hmm. uh, it's not the, the right one. So this, it's not is, yeah, it's, just, it's not the same thing. I think now, like, I haven't played uh, PES in the, in the past couple of years, but they, 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 every year they have more like leagues and, and characters and, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So on Football Manager, so with the exception of the Premier League, all the other leagues are licensed. They have other licensed leagues in other countries too. But for instance, so Premier League is not licensed, so they don't have the logos of the teams. There's really no likeness in the game since the 3D engine is is not as detailed as uh, as FIFA or, or Pro Evolution. Yes. Yeah. So when we talk about licensing, it's just using the team's uh, name and badge and stuff like that. But there are a whole lot of community databases that you can use to include the badge of the teams that are not licensed and player pictures and etc. Um, so it's pretty much what I do when the new Football Manager game is released. I just download it and download the, the badge kits and the player faces packs and just install them. Okay, yeah, that's that's similar to, and probably in Brazil you had this as well, uh, in the PlayStation 1 era, um, where, to be honest, in Mexico, most of the games that you could find were just pirate games, because in, that, in those times there were no, like, for people joining in, in the States, like, they, they, there were no GameStops or anything. Like, the, the, the game sellers were, like, these other chains, but only will just bring, like, a couple of games and you had to go to, like, flea markets uh, mm -hmm. or Mexican tianguis, that's how we call them, to buy games. But if you wanted, like, a, a larger library, you will need to buy pirated games. And these pirates were, like, I would say quite quite sophisticated because they would take like Revolution Soccer or Winning Eleven, and they would manually add like the Mexican League and the characters and the players and all those things. So sounds similar to 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 this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's pretty similar to that. It's pretty, I, I I was laughing because uh, there's this. Uh, there's this meme that says that this represents Brazil more than soccer and samba. Uh -huh. And on Brazil, we have this thing. I sent you. The, I'm gonna send you the link on WhatsApp. You can check it out later. Uh -huh. There's this thing called Bomba Patch, and Bomba Patch is exactly what you were describing. It's like FIFA and Pro Evolution <laughs> with, <laughs> with Brazilian teams, and they're still doing this to the PS4. You can buy. I I have their website open right now. Mm -hmm. You can buy the Bomba patch for uh, for Pro Evolution Soccer 2019 with the 2020 Brazilian teams. So you know, nice. it's it's <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> it's it's still it's still active in Brazil, and everybody loves Bomba patch in Brazil. Yeah. It's just it's, which, a, it's a national it's a national treasure. Which makes me wonder why isn't there like indie games like soccer indie games you know or at, at least i haven't i know that the the in uruguay and I probably you know this this guy fernando sansuero from batobi he mm -hmm. uh, his team is working on a game called pixel soccer which is a mm. 2d sprite uh, pixel art uh, soccer game and they recently released another game called charrua soccer for uh, Apple Arcade, which is, uh, mm. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, I will say, it's more like a, a Barney Strikers than a FIFA or than a Pro Evolution Soccer. But I'm, I'm wondering, like, why in these countries we haven't seen a soccer game or something. I think it's, it's a hard type of game, to, not only to do, right? It's, it's, um, it's not easy to make a soccer game when you come to think of it, right? And make it right, and then it is a market that is cornered by FIFA and Pro Evolution and uh, and, and Football Manager. 
Yeah, what, what, I wouldn't go what, after what? that market. Like, like uh, uh, after the same market, I would go after a market such as the the what's the name of the soccer game with cards, Rocket League. You know, more on the mm -hmm. arcade side. But yeah, sorry, go ahead. And and you know, one, one thing I'm, I just access the uh, the Steam statistics because mm -hmm. we talk about you know there's a lot of FIFA players and Pro Evolution Soccer players. But no matter what time of day you get into the uh, Steam current top games by current player count, Football Manager is going to be in the top 10. Uh, and I'm not kidding. So right now, I have it open. So right now, the top players, Counter-Strike, then you have Dota 2, Terraria, GTA 5, uh, PUBG, Rust, and Football Manager. Football Manager is above, it's above Rocket League, actually. So, you know. Yeah. And... But if you go an, an alternative route to make soccer games, uh, I met this guy. Uh, I started following him on Twitter, and and I I was lucky enough to meet him in person in Melbourne, and he developed this game called Gambare Super Strikers, which is a soccer tactical RPG. Okay, and it's a game that I love. That I think it's lots of fun. I'll send you a link as well, and. Yeah, I'll put these links uh, on the YouTube description. In case yeah, anyone. yeah, please do. Please do. And uh, if he sees this video, I apologize. I, I know he's from South America. I can't recall from where he is. But, wait, wait. Yeah. But you mentioned Melbourne. He was living in Australia? Yeah, he lives in Australia. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And, and he developed this game. And this game is lots of fun. I started following him on Twitter before I moved to Singapore. And then I met him in Australia. And... And it's, it's a pretty fun game, you know. I really like the game. It's and it's a different take on soccer. Nice. Uh, but that's a good question. Why why there are no more? Why there? Why there's not more soccer games? That's a good question. Anyway, but yeah, that's the the game. That well, actually, I also wanted to mention a couple of things before we jump into the next um, game. I can I, I can talk about Football Manager for six hours if you want. Oh to yeah, yeah, I know. All <laughs> my stories and my exploits. It's amazing, man. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I I tried to do some research on the engine that they used, uh, and apparently it's a custom uh, engine. Yeah. That. Uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's. Uh, according to my research, is more or uh, optimized for rendering like lots of text and lots of these things and the simulation, like the backend side of things. Because yeah, I, I have to agree, the three D uh, capabilities of the game. I don't think it looks bad, but it's just like you can tell that it's not the the, the priority for for the developers. No, definitely. Yeah, the so. community. Yeah, the community every year moan about the three D game engine. There's, yeah. Actually, there's there's lots of people that. So when before the game was called Football Manager, it was called Championship Manager, and then there were some licensing issues and it turned Football Manager. I never never got into details of why it changed, but anyway, originally it was text only. It was like Jay passes to Arturo, Arturo shoots, go, and it was like that. And that was, and that's one of the most exciting things I've ever played in my life. <laughs> <laughs> then they introduced the 2d engine which is like uh an overview of the pitch from the top and the players are circles mm -hmm. and they're moving the ball around and then the 3d engine was introduced but there's a lot of people that still plays that still plays using the 2d engine actually the simulation is exactly the same there's no uh you have no, you don't lose anything if you play in 2D or text only. But you know, it's it's up to. But but when you play 3D, there's some wonky stuff that happens. You know, that's that's pretty odd. Yeah, so, and also, well, two two extra things. One is that they've been releasing a yearly game for 15 years yeah. now, so yeah. it's similar to FIFA. Um, mm -hmm. That every year you have a, a new version of the game, but also I was reading that. You know, in FIFA, you mostly play like matches of six minutes, eight minutes tops. Mm -hmm. uh, 
although the internal clock of the of the match says like 90 minutes but yeah, uh, yeah. that's that's how the simulation works right and usually the scores <clears throat> when they are balanced the the two players are balanced you end up with scores similar to the ones that you see in real life soccer but if you play and you can set the fifa match to be 90 minutes but if you play for 90 minutes then kind of you disbalance the game so you could end up with scores such as i don't know 100 versus 100 or something and football manager the simulation it's based on a, like a 90 minute simulation if that makes sense although it can be speed up so you don't have to wait the 90 minutes but yeah that's one thing that i i, I think it's it's interesting uh, because I was thinking, well, what if Football Manager doesn't just add a FIFA mm. thing on top of the game? But I, I think that's one of the challenges they could probably. Encounter. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the Football Manager player he really doesn't care about what FIFA do, right? And mm -hmm. and vice versa, probably. Myself, so when I used to play. You know the early versions of FIFA and the games that came before FIFA. It it always bothered me because in the end it came down to your uh, manual skills, right? It's how yeah. well you can play the game. Mm -hmm. You can, if you're a good player, you can get a shitty team and you can beat the top team in the world, right? Uh, and what attracted me on Football Manager is exactly that you really can't do that, you know. Um, and that that is what is very attractive to me uh, is not to have this manual control over the player's skills right yeah uh, and yeah totally and uh yeah i think uh, the last time i played fifa which was 2020 uh there's this mode uh that allows you to manage your team uh, I think it's called a coach mode or something. I'm not a big fan of that part of the game. I prefer just mm -hmm. to jump in and, and play some, some matches and, and, and uh, this one season of the Mexican League or the, the Spain League. But um, yeah, I think they're also getting into that ground. But you don't have the like the granularity that you get on, oh, no, no, no. on, on Football Manager. But Actually, yeah. actually... Uh... I don't know, 10 years ago, something like that, EA Sports had a series called FIFA yeah. Manager and that competed against Football Manager and pretty much lost. You know? hmm. Well, yeah. <laughs> also, I, 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 was, uh, I, I was wondering, in, in your years as a soccer fan, what's been the, the most... The worst moment of your life, because I know you 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 don't care about the uh, national team, right? Uh, yeah, I don't care about the national. So team. you don't care about the uh, Brazil losing seven oh, the one. Seven one? No, no, yeah. no, no, not really. I, I, it's not that I that I dislike the national team, that I root against the national team. I just yeah. don't root for them. You know, I just I don't ever get excited about the World Cup, and I I don't know why. I really. There's no reason, you know. And so watching that match as a neutral observer was very interesting, you know. It was a very, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a very interesting moment. But uh, so my most painful moment, yes, as oh, it's uh, that's easy. That's remember that when I told you that uh, I don't remember my mom and my dad birthday yes yeah i remember december 17th 1995 and mm -hmm. that's the saddest uh that's the sad my saddest day as a soccer fan that's when my what, what? team uh-huh that's when my team santos was uh was horribly horribly cheated out of a national league title and that was really painful. That was the day when I found out that God does not exist. Because <laughs> <laughs> if God existed, he would never, never let that happen. It, it was horrible. It was, it was a terrible, terrible day. Very sad. Okay. Okay. And I, do re I do remember the date. I don't remember my dad's birthday, my mom's birthday. <laughs> That's cool. 
But yeah. then we have to jump into the next game. So you, 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 you don't want me to talk about my happiest <laughs> football manager memories for six hours? You sure? Uh, I, I, I you know you can. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I could. I, I know you could talk about these for six hours, but I don't know if anybody wants to hear about these for six hours. <laughs> yeah, I know that's you know that's that's the curse of uh, being a football manager player. It's just nobody cares about you, <laughs> and right. that's you know that's that's okay. But so one one last thing about football manager, yes. it is available on I think it's available on Steam. Mm -hmm. uh, let me check. I'm opening Steam here. Oh, maybe it's no longer available. So there is a. Oh, actually, it's available on YouTube. They made it available on YouTube. Amazing, awesome. I'm gonna give you the link. You put it for people so people can get educated on football. Now. <laughs> okay. So a few years ago, Sports Interactive made a documentary called "An Alternative Reality: The Football Manager Documentary," and they tell the story of the game and they tell the story of people who play the game. They interview a lot of players, you know, and it's, it's, I loved it because it, <laughs> it is my people. But if you want to understand what, what, what I mean, I suggest you watch the documentary. It, it is pretty cool. It's about okay. A lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. I'll put the link uh, down there as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's go to the next one. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, before people leave. Okay. <laughs> no, maybe, maybe, you know, you should rank and make a top, 15 uh, podcast about uh, the order of which football manager game is your favorite to your last least favorite. But oh, talk... yeah, I can start right now. So let's get started. <laughs> let's talk okay, about let's let's... this fifth game. Um, fifth game. Yes. Let us know why did know. Don't... you choose the game. I don't know if I told you on, my, on our conversations, but I'm going to cheat a little bit on this one too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm I, sure. I think, I think I told you, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so so the last one is it's probably on a lot of people's list, right? It's 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 way more popular than Football Manager, and it is Civilization. Uh, <laughs> but we, we, yeah, we didn't we didn't ask first. Um, so so yeah, so Civilization. I think the Civilization I played most was the first one, probably. Okay. Because that was when. I had, I was a kid. I had infinite time to play video games, and, and that was released in 1991, by the way. So 1991, yeah. Microprose. Uh, 29 years ago. Yes. 29 what? years ago. Wow. 29 years ago, and and I know, I know for a fact because I tried playing Civilization One again uh, a few years ago. It it did not age well civilization one is horrible to play nowadays okay but, but civilization six is pretty good it's it's i would say that six is my second favorite uh after one and probably the second one i played the most and which is the latest game that was released the civilization yeah, yeah, yeah. six yeah. in 2016. 16 yeah no, so it sounds about right and and a lot of people don't like the art style of civilization i absolutely love it you know it's like we're talking about bioshock infinite it have its style and it sticks to it and i really really like it and the soundtrack of civilization 6 is incredible yeah the songs are absolutely beautiful it is a great game but i I don't play a lot of Civilization anymore, uh, to be honest, because I kind of moved on to to the Paradox Grand Strategy games, which is like a more complex, crazier versions of Civilization. You know? Are those like the Europa Universalis? Yes. Europa, Europa Universalis, Crusader Kings, uh, Hearts of Iron, Stellaris. And they they are very different than civilization in some senses, but how can I put this? It's like there is a point where, at least to me, you 
you graduate from civilization. I mean, it doesn't mean that you become an amazing civilization player. I, I'm not a good civilization player. I suck at civilization, but, <laughs> uh, but I kind of knew how all the mechanics kind of work. Right? I, you know, the tech tree. You know, the units. You know, the wonders. And at least to me, it becomes a little bit stale. You know. Uh, so then I was trying to look for something that would itch my civilization scratch, and then that's when I found about Paradox games, and they are uh, way more complex than civilization, but I feel that to me at least they are way more fun. You know, it's 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 hard to put my finger on why, but the mechanics are. I think that because the mechanics are much more complex and I feel like it is much easier for you to lose on the paradox games than than on civilization that that's why I enjoy them more but that said overall civilization is still a better game right and the paradox games are very niche they're they are very they're the football manager of strategy <laughs> games they are for weird people no they aren't for weird people i mean they are for uh, for people that are looking for a very specific thing right and but overall i mean civilization it it, it, it is it is a better game because it appeals to more people and it appears to more appeals to more people because it's a better game you know yeah, I, I, I wish I had better words to describe it again. But no, 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 that, yeah. that's that's great. And I, I'll take a, a step back and just mention a couple of facts about Civilization, which yeah, yeah, is sure. uh, uh, it's a it's a real time strategy game. Uh, I was showing well, some, some turn based, t- turn based, turn based, yeah, strategy turn-based. game. Um, are all the Civilization games, uh. It take place in a terrain that is like hexagonal based. No, uh, I think the hexagonal terrain was introduced on five, but okay. maybe. Uh, yeah, because I think that's uh, what makes these like the the turn based kind of thing instead of like a real time uh, way of uh, like Age of Empires, you know, which I will put in a in a section of games that are easier to understand than civilization Mm -hmm. you know like if you want to start in these type of games in strategy games i will start with uh age of empires first over civilization in my opinion okay so so first of all it looks like civilization 4 is hex based already so uh it probably started on 4 but i'm not really sure i may be wrong uh, and I, I I don't know if I agree, you know, because uh, because Age of Empires is real time, right? Age of mm-hmm. Empires is it's more similar to StarCraft than it is to Civilization, you know. Um, Could be. Yeah, I I I don't know what you would play. Well, there's a Civilization, a or there was a Civilization game for Facebook. Which was like a really? farm bill style of game, uh, in the civilization, using the civilization uh, world. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Also, also want to mention other couple of things. One is that the publisher and developer, at least for the first ones, because if you go and and you start seeing like all the console ports and all the mm. expansions and things like that, they are other publishers and developers but it was published and developed by microprose which turned into firaxis games mm-hmm. uh, and they use these um engine up until civilization 4 called game Real. i'm not sure if you're familiar with with it and then they have starting civilization 5 these uh, engine called firaxis lore which stands for low overhead rendering engine which is oh. built on top of uh, Direct 3D technology by Microsoft. I'm pretty sure then it's probably just available on Windows machines, Civilization. 
I will assume. No, it's, it's on Mac as well? Uh, I think so. Uh, it's, it's available on the Switch for sure. Okay. Maybe, maybe, yeah, I... I I'm just I, assuming I because of that, but I don't know. <laughs> no, I, 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 I would guess that it's available for Mac and... Uh, uh, well, I, I, I would guess Mac, Switch for sure. Uh, but I, is, I it, is it a port or is it a different game? Because that might be... No, 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 no. It is Civilization VI. The game, the game that is available on Switch is Civilization VI. Mm -hmm. how, how do you Including, play on, on Switch? That I, I, don't, I, I, I don't know. I never played it on Switch. I almost bought it on the Switch, but I kind of gave up buying on Switch. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but it's, it is the fully fledged Civilization VI, including the DLCs. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, I, I, I've, I've tried playing more like uh, uh, strategy games. It's also, I, I believe it's not necessarily my type of game, but I enjoy like Civilization has two things that I love. One is like the story or these characters that you can see and, and they look amazing. And, and when you see the tra trailers and all that, it's it's amazing. And, and the music as well, uh, the, the music. Yeah, yeah. The latest song, and I think it's from Civilization VI, the Baba Yetu song. Oh, uh, that's from... Either three or four, but I'm guessing four. Okay, that's well. The the latest version that I heard, like with an orchestra and all those things, mm. it's uh, it's so beautiful. It's so so beautiful. Yeah, it's Civilization Four. Okay, good to know. Good to know. But this one, but on Civilization Six, they have every every uh, every civilization has its own theme, and they have four versions of the theme uh, for the different ages. So you have a version of the Stone Age, you have very uh, a small amount of instruments, and then it starts to become grander and grander and grander, and you know, and it's it's pretty cool. Nice, nice, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's Civilization. I think that's our top five, or Jay Santos top five games of all times. Uh, although yeah. you cheated a bit, you basically said like, "Oh, all the all the portals are my favorite games." But no, I I I really appreciate you taking the time to open your heart, your gamer heart, no, to great. talk about yeah. these games that you're passionate about. Uh, it's you know, it's amazing. I, I I loved it. It was lots of fun. Really yeah, <laughs> and I hope that uh, we can play one of these games because I think. We we played mostly just Mario Kart, right? That's the, let's the play. Only thing. You know, you know, what of these games have a multiplayer component that is lots of fun? Football Manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like you get ready, and it's like, oh Jay, get ready. Let's 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 go and play. And once I'm ready to play, it's gonna be okay. Fun stops here. So yeah, let's it's do fun. that. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. It's the most fun I've ever had with a random number generator. <laughs> and I, I, I think probably uh, Civilization multiplayer, because I from Age of Empire, Empires, which I played back in the uh, dial-up era of internet, was super fun. And I believe like playing something like that today probably is a lot I, of fun as well. I, I, I would be up for some uh, multiplayer Civilization. Absolutely. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. And uh, again, thank you, uh, Jay. Uh, thank you for everything. I, I've said yeah. this many times, not just for, for joining this video, but uh, for everything you've done, for all the opportunities, for all the friendship. I really uh, appreciate that. I, I, I thank you. This, this was amazing. I had a lot of fun. Uh, call me anytime. Um, if you want me again, if you if you need a of a co-host, I can send you my resume. I am very cheap. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or we can talk about uh, my top ten, or my or my six-hour football manager special. I am available. <laughs> Let's do a, a Jay Santos football manager Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> 
But as, again, as good as good as the Star Wars Christmas special. Yeah, Actually. for sure. <laughs> but yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for having me, man. It was amazing. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Have a good night. I know it's late for you. So nah, that's okay. Nice, babe. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. And cut.